Thank you, good. Okay, great. All right. Make sure that's green. This is green. All right, you're good. I think we're all ready to go this time. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is route planning. Okay, last time we talked a little bit about how to interpret the map with the contour lines. Now we're going to be going into actually how do you plan the route. Uh, also, we really kind of skimmed over a couple things last time um, about actually how to take a bearing, uh, pace counting, how do you measure distance, and so we'll cover a little bit of that as well. And then there's also, at some point, we'll have a little choice here as to whether we want to spend a little bit more time on an exercise to get you more comfortable with route planning, or I just also have some uh, kind of useful tips that I've learned along the way uh, to help you make it a better and orient here. And tomorrow, uh, as Colonel Peoples was saying a little earlier, we're having a course, so it'll be something out around the campus, uh, a little section on it. Uh, I think probably since the start of it is over by the senior patio, we might just, uh, Colonel Peoples meet at ASLA and kind of go over it a little bit, uh, take a roll. Okay, it starts at the senior patio? Yeah. Okay, so all you guys meet in the Heritage Room then, please, tomorrow. Okay, so this will be shut down, go to the Heritage Room, splitting up into teams, we have a whole course set out and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay. Okay, so as a review from yesterday, um, I hope you guys can see this okay on here, but remember we were looking at uh, topographical features with the contour maps, and so this is just kind of an exercise to review. So what I did was I kind of put on here, uh, you remember the four ways to determine the uphill, because determining which way uphill is, uh, is key to being able to properly interpret it. And so I was kind of hoping you guys would, would take a look at some of these things to see if you can help me identify what each of the features are, okay? So X1 over here, I was using this from a different course, so X1 is really just a road, it's not a topographical feature, but that's something you might see uh, on an orienteering map is, is uh, uh, that's a, a fairly typical control feature, is, is a road or a trail. Uh, so okay, let's look at Y2. So Y2 is over here, I don't know how well this comes out, this is actually blue coming in here, and blue coming in uh, from this one, and uh, kind of there. Anybody have a guess what we might call that as a, as a feature? Okay, it's a junction, right? There's two things coming together. So an orienteer would call it a reentrant junction, but you would probably call it a junction of two washes or, or two things. Does everybody understand see how that is? And it has some of the things on there that we talked about before. You can sort of see. Um, you know, we talked about the branch coming down and how, how those come together. So you can sort of tell that just by the blue that that's what that particular feature is. Okay, how about Zulu 3? Where's Zulu 3 over here? Over here. Okay, now you can sort of tell it's going to either be a ridge or it's going to be a, a wash or a re-entrant. Uh, anybody tell me which one of those it is? A wash. A wash? And you say that because? It's so here's kind of uphill over here, right? These are some closed contours. And so what you see is it's kind of going downhill, uh, down here. So downhill is really going this way. And again, another clue is this one's been drawn in with the blue, so you can see water flowing. Water usually flows downhill. So if you know this is uphill, it's going that way, that's a good clue that that's downhill. And so since the uh, contour line points uphill, we know it is a re-entrant, okay? Uh, okay, alpha, alpha, down over here. All right. Anybody have a guess what that one is? Is that hilltop? Hilltop, right. It's got closed contours on there, right? And mm -hmm. the top of it's going to be the innermost circle on it. So you look at the top of the hill. Does everybody see that? Okay. All right. Uh, golf hotel over here. This one up here. Okay. So again, it's going to be a ridge or a re-entrant or a spur. Spur is the same thing as a ridge. A ridge, and you say that because it's pointing away from the mountain. Because this contour line is pointing away from the hilltop. So you probably were looking at this contour up here, right? This tells you that it's a hilltop. That's downhill. The contour points downhill, and that tells you that it's a ridge. Now notice it's kind of pointing. Remember, I was telling you most of the time a ranter is a V. In this case, you've got sort of a V-shaped ridge. So that's not an absolute rule there. Okay, uh, Juliet Sierra over here. <coughs> Okay, it's a little bit different. It's not a, it's not a hilltop. It's not a, it's not a ridge. It's not a re-entrance. They want to take a guess. Is that a saddle? A saddle, right? That was the last choice, right? Uh, yes, it is a saddle. And when I say that again, you know, here I'll look at the at the dark below. So you can sort of see that you've got the hill over here, kind of coming down, and a hill over here. And you can sort of see that what, what's happening is this is going downhill over here, and this is going downhill over here. And because these contours are closed, right, it's open, it's going around the base, it sort of says that you're coming down a hill and there's sort of a flat spot there. The other thing that kind of gives it away a little bit is, remember I was telling you there's sort of an hourglass shape to a lot of saddles? 
That's because on a saddle, at low point, the water's going to want to fall off to the sides. And if the water falls off to the sides, it will erode into one of these washes. And so you see that hourglass shape, a lot of times that's the saddle. Okay, and then um, let's see. So Sierra Tango, where's Sierra Tango here? Okay. Single closed contour. That's going to be a small hilltop, right? Like a little knoll, something like that on there. Okay? All right. So that'll help out. Um, the other thing that I kind of neglected to mention is, is uh, last week we did the, the map folding map exercise, right? And one of the issues you have when you fold a map and it's real small is you sort of lose the big picture, right? And one of the things that's going to be critical to you when you're out on the field is, remember I told you you need to get that magnetic needle pointed towards the north end on there? Well, here's a case where, let's say we're starting at this control and want to go to this control, and all we've got is this little myopic view of a tiny portion of the map. Well, you know, is this north or is this north? All right, if you do it wrong, what's going to happen? If you point the north end of the needle to south, which direction are you going to go? Opposite direction. Exactly, the opposite direction you want to go, okay? So you want to make sure it's right. So what can you do that, to, to quickly do that? A little tip here. Uh, Look at what's printed on there. Okay, so all of these things, if it's a score it should have the number like 53, if it's number 53. The point to point will say what sequence it's in, like in this one here. Those things are always going to be printed so that they're facing the top, right? The top will be this way on the map. Well, in every orienteering map I've seen, north is pretty much at the top of the map going up that way. So you can count on the fact that this is going to be north going that way. And that way, you, you can instantly know which way to put the magnetic needle. That'll save you a lot of confusion because I've gone the wrong way before. It's pretty confusing. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. And of course, you have to be a little careful here. That could be a nine, right? So just be careful of sixes and nines. Any questions on that? Okay. Okay. So let's talk about route planning. Uh, I think I mentioned the acronym CAR: Control, Attack, um, Attack, and <laughs> Route. All right, so this is a, 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 the control feature. C is control. What is the feature you're looking for? Uh, attack point we'll talk about in a second, but you want to make sure you have a good, reliable attack point that's easy to get to. And then the route. What's the best route to get there that's the most efficient that saves the most time? Okay, so an attack point. It's a feature in the terrain you can easily recognize. He's pointing at a road junction there. Everybody see that? Okay. It's located close to the control. So here's the control that you want to get to, number eight. <coughs> All right. And you can orienteer quickly to it. So this is the idea is that, again, you know, uh, experienced orienteers don't rely on the compass so much. They're really doing the map and trying to find the easiest way to get there. So it's all about the map. And so if you can find an attack point that's easy to get to, like from 7, I could use this as what's called a handrail. And a handrail just follow that road until I get to the intersection. How much do I need to use the compass for that? Not, Not a lot, right? You just need to get oriented, make sure you're going the right way on the road, going the right general distance. And then when you get to this... This feature, that's the time you're going to slow down and be a little bit more careful about how you approach the control. Okay? Uh, so picking the attack point is probably the most important part of getting from A to B. Okay? All right. So here's some things on here. So the question is, what, what do you want to pick? And let me explain what some of these are on the map, just in case you don't know legend. So here's a road kind of meandering along. The blue up here is a little stream. Uh, this brown little thing with the little tick marks on it, that's an earth bank on there. X is some sort of man-made feature. It could be a sign, a post, something else, who knows. Uh, and then this right here means a cliff that you can't go over. Okay. So any of those things turns out could be a possible attack point for this thing, right? And again, the idea is, is from here, how can I get to it easily? Um, you know, if you uh, steer to, uh, kind of took, took a basic angle that would come towards the cliff, it'd be kind of nice because if you saw the cliff, you just know you need to go to the left of it. But then from there, you can attack six. Likewise, you could actually go past the control and come back. Or if you're careful, you'd have to use some uh, aiming off here to make sure you hit this control point. We'll talk about aiming off in a minute. Uh, you could also use that uh, uh, man-made feature. OK? OK, how about uh, control point number three? Any ideas? Uh, use an intersection. The, the road intersection, or possibly this thing over here. Uh, number four, this is a marsh. On here, this is a tar line, kind of going up here. Okay, you might want to pick out the edges of the marsh that you can find, not the center. You would want to go straight through it. Possible. Uh, while I'm at, they didn't 
point, point out anything about the power line, but let me give you a really good tip about, I think all of, all of the uh, uh, Phoenix maps and certainly the Pioneer map, but when you see a power line on there and you see this tick, sometimes it's a double line for a big power line, but these ticks that go across, that actually marks the exact location of where the tower is. Okay, so think about that on the Pioneer map. I don't know if, how many of you guys have actually done it, but there are three power lines that go across here, and one of them is huge. It's one of the high-tension ones, and these, these uh, towers are like 400 meters apart sometimes. And so it's, you could see them for forever, and it's really easy to tell which one's which, and they're great at navigation aids. So think about that when you start uh, getting out there, if you're going to be doing the event uh, this weekend. Okay. Okay, attack point selection. Here's the, the what not to do. Okay, something you don't want to do. Attack point is supposed to be easy to find. So don't pick one that's as hard to find as what the control is. And here's an example that somebody did where they have a bunch of these, what they're called root stocks in little X's. A root stock is where a tree falls over and the big root kind of comes up. And sometimes those are used as control features uh, on there. But you can sort of see the problem, right? If I'm coming over here and I wanted to hit this X, well, what happened if I got off a little bit? I come across a rootstock. I might think I'm there when I'm really there, right? And I'm going to end up going into the marsh looking for control that's not there. This is a much stronger attack point, would be the west end of the marsh. You could come around here until it bends around, come up to here, and then you have a nice strong attack point close by. Everybody see that? Yeah. Okay, so if you're selecting a route, you want to consider different things. And a lot of route choices, this is one of the great things about the sport, is you pick out the route that's best for you. You may have a choice of going over the hill, right, shorter distance, or maybe you don't want to do the elevation go around. So you want to consider how far it is on the route. You want to consider what kind of elevation gain, that's reading the contours. Uh, what kind of vegetation, if there's vegetation marking for something that's really thick, that's hard to get through, you probably want to avoid it. Um, and then, uh, and then the ease of navigation. How do you pick your attack point? How good is your attack point? What sort of things are you going to see along the way? So the gain loss again, interpret the, the contour lines, and then look out for vegetation. But these are the things we're really going to focus on here next: is, is how do you make this navigation a little easier? That's the use of what we call handrails, collecting features, uh, aiming off, which is a more foolproof technique for, for finding a feature, and then catching features. And we're going to talk about each one of them. <coughs> Okay, so handrail. We talked about one already, right? It's like a road, it's a trail, it's something linear, meaning it goes along for a long time on a kind of a, a line. Uh, and ideally, it closely parallels your route, and so you don't really have to think about it. You just follow the handrail. A handrail could be a wash, too, right? Or a ridge. You could follow any of those as a handrail. And this one's follow. Right? You could go down this handrail until you find the trail and go over, or go over here and do this, or come over to the stream, follow the stream up. Uh, but you get the idea, right? In this case, the, the, these handrails will take you right to the control. Hardly a need for an attack point for that. Okay, collecting features. Okay, this is, um, I sort of mentioned last week about staying in contact with the map. Remember using that thumb, the all-important thumb that tells you where you are and keeps you in relation to everything. This is what's going to keep you from getting lost. Okay, so when you plan your route and you've got an idea like here, it's going to follow this... Uh, whatever, this path to get over there. Um, but what are you going to see along the way? Those are your collecting features. Those are your navigational aids, okay? So orienteering is not going from point four to point five in a straight line with the compass, all right? It's really micro-navigating. It's staying in contact with the map, reading the features, going a little bit at a time and having lots of checkpoints, and checking each one off the list as you go down, okay? So here's got some little arrows here. Uh, so the first thing you might see is you're going to cross a road, you know, might advance the thumb at that point. Uh, here you're going to cross the uh, uh, little stream, um, you know, a trail junction, uh, a little cliff, cliff edges, just a ruin, trail intersection, vegetation control, right? So all along the line, you're, you're, all along that route, you're going to be kind of micro-navigating your way there and, and checking things off, right? And I think I talked about this last week again, but Remember, if you try and go straight line, you can do that. It'll work, right? You can count your paces. You can go off. But if you goof uh, like that, the rootstock is a good example. You tried to find rootstock was your control, and you tried to go straight to that rootstock, and there's 20 other rootstocks out there, you could get endlessly confused. So picking a route that's got the collecting features is your foolproof way uh, of getting there reliably. Well, I shouldn't say foolproof. There's always a way to mess up. OK, aiming off. <clears throat> So aiming off is when you are actually going to use the compass and take a, a bearing or at least orient yourself off with a direction of travel to get there. And uh, this happens a lot to many beginners where 
I've got to reach my attack point. It's in the reentrant, so I'm going to take a bearing that goes exactly to that point. But you know, you might have taken the bearing wrong. You might drift off a little bit, and you show you end up in the reentrant. It's the right reentrant, but is it to the right or is it to the left? You don't know, right? And so you're, you're stuck, and you take a guess, and you go up, but you don't know how far you went. So then you have to go back the other way, and you end up racing back and forth up and down the reentrant. Anybody done that? Looking for the thing, right? So aiming off is a technique where you deliberately put a little bit of error in there. Right? And I'm going to go, I'm going to, my real aim, thing I'm aiming for is going to be like maybe 50 meters to the left of this thing. Right? And here's an example. Uh, you're looking for something that's on a trail. And these are contour lines. And let's assume this is uphill for now. So this is going down a slope. right? And uh, so it's, it's kind of here. So here there's probably a, a good choice and a bad choice for which way you want to aim off. Any of these, one of these look better, more appealing to you than the other? Aiming off the left. Aiming off to the left, right? Okay, if I go up here, I have to go up the hill just to come back down it, right? That's extra work. You don't want to do that. In this particular notional case, it'd be nice to just come over here until you hit the road, uh, come here, and when it starts to go uphill, you know you're getting close. Your attack point could actually be, you know, the road where, where it starts to climb up. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, and catching features. Well, a catching feature is almost the same thing as a collecting feature. It's something distinctive that you know you're there. But in this case, it means, oops, I've gone too far. Uh, so in this case, if you're looking for control number five, and for whatever reason, you blow right by it, right? You know when you hit this fence, this is a pretty obvious example here, but you know if you hit the fence, that you've gone too far, right? And you need to recover and somehow relocate yourself and get back to it. Um, but other things that you can use are distinctive hilltops, um, it could be a ridge, um, it could be other things, uh, 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 you know, a stream. Um, other, other features like that can be useful as catching features. Okay, so those, all those things combined are all part of your route and how you're going to get there. Okay, so again, to summarize, um, that attack point is critical. Make sure it's strong as it can be, easy to find, right? Don't pick out something that's, real, that's just as hard to find as a control. That's not helping you. Okay. Any of these things on the list can, can, be, can be done there. Um, again, aiming on handrails and catching features. Okay, and once again, I want to emphasize the route execution. This orienteering is all about the map. It's not really about the compass, right? Holding the map on there, thumbing the map, pace counting where appropriate. We haven't talked about that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and then periodically spot check where you're at. Like, uh, you know, if, if you're going on a road and you haven't done anything for a while and it's kind of weaving around and it's made a turn and it's going for a long way, you know, check and see what the, what the uh, direction of that is and see if it matches where you think you are on the map. Also, if you pass maybe a, a, a wash reentering off to the side that's coming in at an angle that's nice and distinctive on the map, you can always check the direction of that and make sure, you know, give yourself a warm fuzzy that you're really where you think you are. Okay. If it doesn't look right, okay, this is recovery, so you're going to screw up. Everybody makes mistakes, right? The key to a really good orienteer is recognizing that something doesn't look right and being able to recover quickly from it. And so when, when you do that, when you find that something's not right and things aren't, don't try and make it fit. This is another common mistake. I still do this myself sometimes where you, you think you did the right thing and you sort of force yourself to make the train and you do some you know, creative landscaping to try and make it look like... Uh, so that you think you're where you are, when really you're not where you think you are. And, and the best thing to do then is to either, if there's a strong catching feature that you could reuse to relocate yourself and come up with a new attack point, either do that or back up. Okay? Back up is usually the fastest thing. Go back to a collecting feature that you're familiar with, that you know where you are, and then try to figure out what you did wrong, and do a few what-ifs and try and figure out how to get you back on track. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, okay, so... Let's do some uh, route planning here. So I think what I'll do, let's see, we got, uh, I think we got pretty good on time. So what we'll do is we'll maybe look at this one. This is actually the Pioneer Park map. So those of you who are competing on, on uh, uh, Saturday, this is, this is what you're going to see. Um, and uh, I had uh, Nakai uh, made me this little notional uh, course here so we could sort of discuss uh, a little bit about this. <clears throat> okay, so um, you know, I think most of you guys are familiar with that. It's got the big pit. It's got a couple of baseball fields. You've got the big field that's over on this side of Commerce. This is Commerce. This is the uh, Pioneer Parkway there. But our start is over here by the volleyball court. And so our first one is number one. And number one, this is actually kind of, I would call this a white entry level beginner uh, control because it's right on a trail. But um, what do you guys think would be a good way 
What would be an attack point on this? What is the intersection inside? Okay, the inter this intersection or this? Or actually, on this one, it's so trivial, you could almost make the control almost is the attack point, right? Uh, yes, this is a good, this would be either a good, uh, you, yeah, in this case, you can consider this an attack point, or you can consider it as a, as a very definite collection feature, right, for, for where you're going to get there. Um, you know, for, for me, I think what I would do, since really, I, 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 at this point, uh, it is so easy. You could argue you don't even need an attack point. But what an attack point also is, is when do you need to slow down and start looking for the control? Okay, so there's some things you can see along the way, right? This hilltop over here, right? So once you find this trail and run up here, this hilltop would be a logical thing that says, hey, that's only like 30 meters away. Slow down and start looking for the thing, right? Um, okay, so that, that would be a logical attack point. But again, on this one, that could be an attack point. Uh, you could argue you don't need to need one. What about a route? Okay, let's start with the straight line. What, what would happen if I just go here and went on a straight line? What, what's the train going to do for me? It's going to very much. Well, yeah, it, well, I guess what I'm looking for is what about the contour lines here, right? So you sort of see these contour lines that are kind of mapping around here, and you really sort of see a brown line up here, right? Well, up here we identify the hilltop, right? So that means that's up. So this means this direction is down, right? And since this points downhill, what is this feature right here? It's a ridge. A ridge, right? And we're more downhill. Right? So we're gonna, you're going to end up, if you follow this trail, you run up onto a ridge. If you follow this trail, you run up onto a ridge. Okay? So you could maybe start here, you can follow this trail, come over here, find this trail, and go up here. Right? That's one choice. That keeps you totally on the trail, and that's your preference. It's a little longer, though, isn't it? Right? You can do a shorter route. For me, this is almost the ideal uh, kind of no-brainer cross-country thing because we can use both of these things as handrails, right? You've got a funnel here. You've got a trail that's going to be on your left, a trail on your right. I mean, if, I, if I'm way off either way, I'm going to hit one of these two. And then if I hit the one on the right, I just go to the left. If I hit the one on the left, I just go to the right, and I will end up at this. And then you just keep going straight on here until we get to our attack point, the hilltop, start looking for the control, and then you're there. Okay? Everybody see that? Let's try something that's got a little bit more variety. Let's try one to two. Okay, so give me some options. What, uh, well, first of all, what's the feature two? Okay, it's gonna be the center of the circle. It's not quite right at the intersection. <coughs> Maybe it's just a little bit off. So let's say it's a little bit off from there. So what would be the attack point? The, the road intersection, right here. Okay, so what choices do you have what would happen if I went straight, shortest distance? What kind of terrain would I see? Uphill or downhill? Uphill. You go up and take it. Okay. Um, so here's here's our high points. Down here, the close contour. Here's the inside. So that's downhill of it. This is more downhill because it's going around the other one, right? So downhill's going this way. Okay. Here you can sort of see the bunny ears. Remember we were talking about uh, um, boxed Ys the other day. So this is the reentrant that's going down the hill, another reentrant, and there's a junction there. Okay. So if you went straight line, what you'd expect to see is you're kind of up here, what, you're almost in a feature of this, what topographical feature is very close to where you are at this trail junction. Okay. Everybody see, here's the hilltop, here's the hilltop. There's no other contours in between, so these are the same elevation, right? And then the lower contour goes around both of those. So that's a saddle right there. So you could uh, just go right down, you can follow a re-entrance down, and then uh, have set an attack point where maybe this one, where the junction was, and come up. That would be a cross-country route. Or in this case, maybe you just want to run the trail. Right. And find the junction. Okay. All right. Um, so you may be able to do one more, and then uh, <clears throat> we can get into uh, Maybe split it into groups, and then you guys can figure out your own route, and then tell me what you're gonna, what you're, uh, which is the best way. So let's try. Oh, I don't show it all on here. Oh, sorry, I cut off the map. I was gonna go six to seven. I'll just try five to six. So what's the feature at number five over here? Can you see that? There's a closed contour there. Another contour is kind of circling around. It. So five's gonna start in a hilltop. 
What's the feature at number six? <coughs> so here we need, this one you kind of have to look back quite a ways, right? In order to tell what's going on. Because you see a whole bunch of lines here. This is either a ridge or a branch. This is either a ridge or a branch. Got the bunny ears. Yeah, so I got the bunny ears, right? So you'd think that maybe that maybe it's reentry that's going that way. Well, in this case, it's an exception, right? So you really have to kind of figure out what the uphill is. And if you look at how the contours are right here, you see how this one goes all the way around it, sort of forming a ridge. Well, actually, let's pick uh, uh, one down. It kind of circles around here. As you come down further, you see it kind of comes out and forms a ridge this way as the contour points downhill. This comes in, and this is a re-entrance, so the water would flow down this way. This right over here with the patrol room is actually a ridge. Uh, so what route would you take? Okay, what would you use as an attack point? So it's maybe a little far, well, probably not too far for this one, but a logical attack point might be where this trail intersection is, right? I'll take the trail. You take the trail. So Instead you go. Of getting, uh, having the risk of getting lost, just going straight. Take the trail and then realize where that intersection is and turn at the intersection. That's that's a good choice in this case. I, I would fully agree with that um, because rather than just going straight <laughs> line, all you do is kind of go off and be going on the side of a slope of hill over here, which is running across the side slope is kind of difficult. Uh, and then you recover it over here. Probably makes more sense. They got all kinds of choices here, right? You could go this way and take this one all the way around and come over here to this intersection and then over, or you can hit it this way, come over this over to the right, uh, follow it down. But the key is just finding this uh, trail. So, besides looking for a trail, what else can you look for as a clue for where that trail is going to show up? Because sometimes trails are easy to miss, right? So, what's the topographic feature that's near here that will clue you in? Okay. So you should be able to see this ridge. If you come around here, this, see how this ridge is forming on this way? It's got a contour up here, it keeps going down, it keeps going down. But here it's up higher on the ridge. So as you're coming around this, you could run this road until it starts to hit the peak of the ridge. And then you know to start looking around for that trail. That trail should be around that peak. Okay? That'll save you a lot of time rather than just saying, I'm going to walk 47, whatever, 100 paces and then the trail should be there. Because sometimes it's not obvious where it's going to be. But the topographic uh, is always reliable. It'll always get you right to where, you, uh, close to where you need to be. Okay? So I think what we want to do, um, okay, and I, and I somehow get on here. Okay, I had a, um, a version of a, <clears throat> Give me one second while I try and find my lost map. Oh, there it is. Okay, so what this is, this is an actual course that they had at what they call the B meet uh, about uh, eight years ago uh, down in Phoenix. This is the first water map um, on here. And I think what we want to do is uh, we'll split up into little teams. And then maybe take five minutes, and then we'll want each group to just kind of look at it and say, okay, uh, well, have some particular questions. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to plan a route, and then maybe we'll just do it by the four tables and then kind of report on, on, on your route here. But what I'm going to be looking for is uh, we're going to look for the car, right? Control, attack point, route. So you're going to try to identify what the feature of the control is. Now, normally it'll tell you that on the clue sheet, but I want you guys to look at the map and see if you can figure it out. Okay, what possible attack points are there? And then you guys are going to pick one and say, this is what I picked and why. And then what route choices are there? And then uh, why did you pick this? And then probably the most important thing for when we're going to do this exercise tomorrow and when you get out there is what are you going to see along the route? What are you going to see along the way? Because that's really what's going to get you there and keep you from getting lost. Okay? So let me pass out to uh, see if I find them here. <laughs> Back up one. There we go. Alright. So why don't you guys take um, you're going from one to two. Oh, we'll make it easy. And then we'll go two to three. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, two and two. We need to discuss it. Okay. And then uh, we'll jump to five to six. You guys, I mean, you guys weren't here. Are you comfortable doing this? You guys totally. You want to try? Sure. Okay. Try to figure out. Actually, why don't you guys go from zero to one? Sadly, no. Okay. And then you guys will be five to six. Yes. Okay. So take a few minutes. Five, You need an extra copy. I have a couple extra copies. Come on, I'll give you. I cast my vote for the trail path. And then as soon as we get to this intersection, it's right off there. It's so long. It's so long. It's the full one. It's just a full one. Mm. I'm an orange team. Or you get a bow. Or you just get a bow. Just try. Or you can try to get it. How fast do you get through it? How you get through it? Or you can just grow it. So I say, we are trying to try So I say, no, what I would say right here is that the job is this area. Yeah. 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 And then you go right there. Three steps that are easy. You just can't accept it. Because this is the LT action. It's the LT action. So you were green with it. You thought it was going to be a sergeant. You thought it was going to be a sergeant. You thought it was going to be a sergeant. You thought it was going to be a sergeant. It's a play. It was about me when I first got the sergeant. I was going to be a sergeant. And he turned into a sergeant. Bye. I always read my books. I read my books. All comments. Yeah, I just found this. Yeah, I just found this. I do that. I do that. I did like an underlying thing. Or just get a bunch of sticky notes. I love that. I color code my sticky notes. The pink is quotes and then the green is all categories. I do that in like third grade. I kind of just do it when I out. You can read out like the order. Like, how does one English? I know, I just went crazy and woke up and I was like, I don't know, I'm just like, I have to go to a And you could, I'm crazy to figure out how to do it. I know. One time, I had a bop where I had to do my crush to the lady, and we were like, squaring it. It's like, what the?
I don't want to be a master. I don't want to be a master. She wants to take the picture so to me, there's two ways to go. So 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 you turn right on your uh, route, yeah. right? So so you turn left. Yeah. I really hope I don't want to but I That's like the worst part of the I forgot my no, one of the I forgot my name. I was like, hey! I don't last and then they'll never hear your name. Yeah, that happens to me a lot in my family because like different relatives will like jump around to the every time somebody has a party. Like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's how my family is. Like, if someone's having like a get together, they come and just take it. Uh, yeah. 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 Wait, 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 you have a little junction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, it depends how much work you want to do. Um, I like work. You like work. So, what, topographically, okay, what, what do you think the train would be like? Why don't we just stop right there? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, that's why I said shoot. I was thinking we could go that way with this. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you don't know that. So, you know that. So, 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 when you're sitting on the Yes, we're So we're going to provide the six points. So we're deciding just hit this trail. So we're going to hit and go right to there. And as soon as we get to this area, we're going to fall and break up. So, but, uh, alright, so you don't really hear you're going to go. What, 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 I would win. Yeah, like everything. Yeah, I think it's just ride it and then we do it. It's like, oh, it's kind of good time. Yeah, I could see on the show. And then I ate it. Yeah, I made more shit. Yeah, I made more I thought you said I'd wait till I get home. <laughs> <laughs> My friend was like telling me that. So, this is what's happening. You're going to have to go maybe 20 feet. What? She's like, Do you guys maybe maybe consider maybe, maybe just eat. see this is in your ranch? Wow. I just. 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 I
Spokesman is from your table here. All right, and then we're gonna we're gonna take a look here. Uh, so they need to get the best check. Okay. Right. There we go, guys. What's up? Okay. All right. So let's start with this table over here. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like, yeah. And we did. All right. Sorry, group. We went from one to two and two to three, right? Uh. Well, go one to two and two to three, that's fine. Okay, so you start in this like little creek right here. And so we decided to just run towards the point until we hit the trail and then just run the trail all the way over till like you get to this like sort of uphill saddle thing. And like in the turn, that was our tap point. And then you just run to where the like, the, like saddle is pretty much. Mm -hmm. And that's where the point is. And then to get from two to three, we decided we would hit and get onto the creek and then run down the creek and turn left. And then once we got to where there were two hilltops on either side of us, we would, uh, that was our attack point. And then we could go up a little bit more up the re entrance and that would be where point three is. Okay. And if you had a choice between you guys going around here, what would have happened if you had gone straight across there? Uh, we would have to go over this ridge and then back down the ridge. And we decided to just run around it really fast. Okay. And then likewise, if you'd have gone straight line over here. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to go up and down ridges the whole way, and it would be sort of hard to stay on a straight shore. Okay. Of course. Everybody's, every, any questions on that? Any comments? Any, any other options anybody sees? Okay. And I think you guys had the, the, the two to three as well. So do you have anything, uh, well, he took our route. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so that was a very good choice for this, I think, was to rather than try and, and punish yourself going up and down and up and down over many, many ridges. You follow, follow this ridge. Um, I think the stable recognizes that, that this is a good collecting point. This is where the ramp junction is, collecting feature. That's where you would start to do the, uh, whatever it is, uh, north east fork, up this way. Uh, northern Morse Fork, and just follow it up until you're uh, close to, to there. Okay, great. So you're off the hook. Um, you guys want to come in on, on, you went from the start, start up to number one. So. <laughs> okay. We're going to follow, we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna follow that path. Okay, that's that's the answer. How did you get there? So, what other things did you look at? <coughs> uh, well, yeah, you considered some other options first before you went with that one, right? So, like one of the choices was go around. You know, the same thing is following the road over here. So, what would happen if you follow that? Road? Yeah, right. So, you're gonna go right up a ridge. Up to a hilltop and come back down. So it's reliable, but it's more elevation gain, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a better choice if you just follow, so you can come across, try to avoid this green here, and hit the road. Right? And then, uh, lots of handrails on this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Table four. So we were going yeah, from five to six. So what we decided um, originally we were just going to like go right down through here and then just and then basically use the uh, trails as the landmarks. But then we decided to um, just go directly right to the trail, follow it down to the intersection here, and then um, just cut across here and use the uh, this intersection as a landmark, and then follow it back down until we get to uh, 
hundred cities here. And we uh, chose that route because like we're gonna use the trail so it's gonna be a lot easier. Then when we actually cut across and do some cross country stuff, there's not a lot of um, um, actually changes in like the height or whatever, so it's gonna be mostly straight there. Okay. And yeah. All right, and attack point for that? And the attack point, um, we're gonna use those uh, two hills right there and we, and we're going to just kind of uh, like use the more northern hill as the uh, point that it's like closer to. And, uh, okay, so a distinction, an attack point is actually a point you go to. Oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, an attack point, I guess, would be... Uh, uh, well, this could be a reasonable one, right? Yeah. Right, it's, it's, it's from here. Uh, that, so an attack point in this case, again, is find the collecting feature of the junction that you want to use, and then you start slowing down, right? I mean, it doesn't take a lot of effort to find this. This you could run. Right, if you wanted to delete that too. So you're going to put that intersection there, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's see, what are the thing, options here? Uh, so this choice of going across here is a personal choice, right? Um, you can choose to go less distance and go over a top. And if you can reliably find this collecting feature, that's a good choice. You could have also uh, stayed on roads, gone through this clearing, uh, come over here. Right. That's that's. If you're not as comfortable navigating cross country, or if you're a really fast trail runner, you might take uh, take that option. So let me ask you a question then for, for, for your table here. If you came out, so you decide you're going to go cross country, you're going to go from here and try and find this uh, uh, intersection. As, as a, so let's say you come across, you come over the top of the hill, you come down, you hit a road, but you don't see the junction. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Uh, you look for like distinguishing landmarks on your map and then compare it to what you see around you and you try and uh, figure out if you're either uh, like over here or over here or over here. Or, uh, okay, so you know you're going to hit either this one or this one. So you could use your compass and see which way the road is facing, mm -hmm. right? So if you're on this road, your compass should tell you your direction of travel arrow. When you point the direction of travel along the road and line up your magnetic north line, it's going to appear on this map. Mm -hmm. If you're on this road, it'll point that way, right? Yeah. right? If, if it doesn't, if it's pointing in some other weird direction, like you're over here and it's not lining up, you're probably on this road. So change your direction of travel area when we do it. And that way you can verify if you're either on here or here. Mm -hmm. If you're on here, you pretty much know you need to go that way and you'll find it. Um, this road over here, uh, well, since you didn't cross it, I guess you didn't know. But you might want to aim off a little bit there, right? So aiming off is that technique. So rather than doing a straight bearing from here to here, you might come up to this ridge, and when you hit the ridge, maybe just aim off to come down to the point here, and then that way you just know you'll hit this one first and then run down until you get to the attack point. All right. Okay? Everybody see that? Okay, so the idea is keep it simple, right? Try and get things you can get to very quickly. Is that helpful? Is that you guys a little bit more comfortable yeah. with route planning? Good. Okay. Um, all right. Let's. So let's see. What do we have? About seven minutes, eight minutes. Okay. Yeah, let's. We go to eight, eighteen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah, seven minutes, sir. Seven minutes. Okay. Great. So let's just talk about tomorrow's uh, course then. So um, yeah, we'll meet at whatever you said you'd meet. I call it something. We'll meet in the Heritage Room. Heritage Room, guys. Okay. Is that is that in the ASLA building or is that? Uh, it's Jay Rodsey building. building. Yeah. Okay. It's where the ping pong table is. Yes. Where the ping pong table. Oh. Okay. Great. All right, and we'll start on the, the patio. So for this thing, really, okay, it's it's campus, right? You guys all know the campus. You all know the buildings. It's it's, it's a map that that, that uh, so it shouldn't really be challenging navigationally. But what I really want you to start doing is looking at the features on the map. I want you to practice with the folding of the map, um, and I want you to practice with how to orient things the way that we showed last week. Okay, so even though. You probably won't even need a compass, right? I mean, all you really need to do is rotate the map until you're lying next to the building that you want, and off you go. And that's a good thing, right? Orienting off of the terrain is actually a good skill that I want to encourage. But since it'll be a little tougher on Saturday, right, you want to work on that technique of, of thumbing the map, folding it, and taking the bearing. So every time you get to one of these controls, as trivial as it may be, um, you're, gonna, you're going to... Uh, and we'll talk about this again tomorrow, just to refresh it before you go out. Um, but uh, I want you to uh, fold the map for the next leg, you know, work with getting the compass in the direction that you want to go, plan your route, and, and then go for it. Okay? Um, now what we're going to have is 
uh, since there's, everybody's running the same, same thing, right? So I struggled with how to do this so you don't all go to the same place at the same time. And so you're, what you're going to see is you're going to see a cert, your red circle on the map that'll say number one. Okay, I want you to go in the sequence that's on there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't cut across or do anything else. You're supposed to follow that sequence. Um, you also got these. Uh, yeah. Got so you guys are going to have punch cards just like this. So that you'll have punch cards that are similar to the orienteering, but but uh, same, different concept. Yeah, and this is a different punch card because of this special little course that we have here. Um, but what you're, what, you're going to see a little red circle on there. The trick is, is that when you get there, there's not just going to be one flag, there's going to be three. Okay? So everybody's running a different course. So you need to pick the best one to, that matches the, the map feature on there. And it should be fairly easy to do. But what you have here is you've got a, a punch. And so for number one, you've got three choices. Right? So number one on this particular one is a D, an O, and an M. And what you'll see hanging off of the control, you're not going to look for the control code. You're going to look for a little red letter that I have hanging off of it. And if, if, you're, if you think O is the correct answer, you're going to punch it by the letter O. Okay? And you're going to do that for each one of those of the six sequences and then, and then bring it back to the, to the finish uh, at the senior patio again. If you do it properly, what you get when you get back is I'm going to give you a little question. All right? If you do it properly, you will have the right combinations of letters to answer what the question is. And so you just scramble them like a crossword or something, scramble them off. And then the first team that correctly submits the answer with the correctly punched card is the team that wins. Okay? Uh, any questions on that? How many are um, Well, let's see. I have 12 maps, 12 different courses. Uh, so I could go, I, we could duplicate after that. But if we had, uh, so it's probably at least two, two, three. Two, three. Three. Yeah. two uh, we have 22 or so. It depends on how you look like this today. It depends on who's here tomorrow. So you had one or two a team. Yeah, two or two a team. Okay, two or two a team. All right, sounds great. Okay. All right, any other questions about more, guys? Please show up at the uh, heritage room. We'll leave everything there. We'll move out the single, single patio. We'll probably go over this one more time. We'll have it in your hand, and uh, we'll have everything set up for you then. It'll be a fun time. Wear uh, shoes that you can walk around, okay? Uh, anything else for uh, Glenn here today? No, sir. All righty. Okay.